Coming up on Hawk TV, we take a look at a new club at Hebron. Two authors who visited to talk about their new sci-fi book. And the end of the girls' basketball season. This is Hawk TV for Friday, February 2nd. Good morning, Hebron High School. I'm Elena Barnes. And I'm Nico Cox. Pencils of Promise is a new fundraising club that aims to help children in third world countries. Michelle Finninger got to take a closer look at the club's purpose. Pencils of Promise is focused on getting funds for school supplies, clean water, and money to build schools for students in third world countries. So I actually went to Pakistan last year and I saw a bunch of kids working on the streets and they were younger than me. So I started to do more research and I found out like throughout the world, so many kids don't have education. And I thought this was a problem that needed to be raised here because we're privileged students, so I feel like we should have the ability to help these kids get an education. Sponsor Jeanette Rooks said that Mathani's effort to act upon his idea of helping children in third world countries was the action she's been looking for. When I teach my class, we focus a lot on issues that we think are important in the world. And we talk about the idea that people always want to say it's important to build awareness but I always say, well, what's the point of being aware if you're not going to do anything? If you're just going to go, oh, that's a problem, that's too bad. So when uh, Muhammad came to me and said he wanted to start a club that was specifically for fundraising, for education in places where they don't have the same resources we do, that's the kind of action I'm really excited to see people take. That once he had that awareness, he had to do something about it. Co-president Ellie Batt said that her personal experience was one of the reasons why she wanted to join Pencils of Promise. I joined because um, I've actually been to Guatemala, which is one of the countries that they sponsor, and I've like seen the kids there in poverty, and um, they really need help. One kid like came up to me, and I like gave him a pencil, and he was like, "I've never had one before." And soccer balls, like just a lot of kids have never had access to anything that's really their own. Like kids there don't have shoes. They don't have access to clean water, so it's just like very different, and they didn't do anything to deserve that. Mathani said that he hopes the club will have an impact on underprivileged communities. Like I've always looked at education as a right instead of a privilege, but when I went there, I realized it's a privilege, and we should promote that, and we should help other kids who can't do that. And I think Pencils of Promise is a, is a great way to help these kids and get them to schools. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Michelle Finninger. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Michelle. The club's next meeting is February 14th during A Block in room 1625. February is National Heart Health Month. Cole Phillips has a few tips on how to keep your heart healthy. Hi, I'm Cole. Do you care about your heart's health? I sure do. Here are three examples on how to keep your heart healthy. Experts say it's important to stay moving throughout the day. You could park your car farther from the school. You could take a couple of walks. You could exercise daily. But one thing you should never do is stay seated. We need healthy fats in our diets. Fats like unsaturated and saturated fats. One thing we don't need, however, is trans fats. Instead, eat something healthy. Look on all the labels of your foods. Make sure it has 0% trans fat. Another important thing is getting enough sleep. Make sure you get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. If homework is an issue, just start it sooner. I'm Cole, and this has been three ways to keep your heart healthy. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Cole. After the release of their book, Zenith, on January 16th, author and alumnus Lindsay Cummings and co-author Sasha Allsberg came to the school to talk about the creation of the novel. Hannah Mobley got to take a closer look into the making of Zenith. I'm a number one New York Times bestselling author. <laughs> Zenith. After being number one on New York Times Young Adult eBook in June 2016 and number seven on New York Times Young Adult Hardcover in January 2018, authors Sasha Allsberg and Lindsay Cummings spoke about their novel Zenith on January 22nd in the auditorium. We like to describe it as Guardians of the Galaxy, but with girls. So it's a really fun kick book team of girls who go in and rain havoc across the galaxy. My favorite character 
is definitely Andy. She's the captain of the ship. Um, she's strong and fierce and she loves her crew. Uh, she would do anything to keep them safe, but she's also not afraid to do really dark things. I think that was kind of something that we had in mind from the start, just to write really tough girls, um, but also ones that aren't afraid to feel emotions too. When Cummings graduated in 2009, she got sick with chronic fatigue and could not go to college as she planned. So it just made me really, really exhausted all the time. Like my mind, my body, everything was just drained. Um, and writing kind of became my escape. And it ended up being just something that was really fun for me to do. And I became so passionate about it. Um, so I'm grateful that it happened in a way because it got me to this moment right now. Cummings said her education at Hebron helped her as a writer, including the time she spent in Jeffrey Willard's English One class back in 2005. He was such a cool teacher. I thought it was just so fun and unusual. And I actually sent the first draft of my first ever novel to him and he tore it to shreds, um, which at the time I was like, oh my gosh, that's so mean. But that was the nicest thing I think anyone's ever done for me. The two authors began writing in November of 2015 and after a little over two years later, finally released their book. Alsberg said letting the book write itself was important to the process. When we first write, started writing it, we kind of had a loose outline as to where we wanted the book to go, but we didn't really have it cemented down. So I think that when you're writing a book, you should let the story carry you. You shouldn't always have these points in the book that you have to hit, because if your story wants to go and veer off in another direction, uh, you know, let it do that. With the help of a strong friendship and common interests, both authors said writing is important no matter what struggle you may have. If you have any uh, learning disabilities or disabilities at all, don't let those hold you back. Um, you can conquer them. And writing may seem like a difficult thing, but just let your heart take you where it wants to be taken. And if you want to write, write. And you know, uh, it may start off being not the best type of work ever, but just keep on practicing and you'll get there. I remember sitting in class, actually, I used to write short stories. Um, so really, you can start at any point in time. Um, and to be a better writer, you just have to learn to be a better reader, practice doing both of them all the time, and eventually, it'll click. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Hannah Mobley. Now back to the studio. We did it! Thanks, Hannah. You can purchase Zenith at Barnes & Noble or check it out in the library. We'll be right back. Honey, where's my 2018 talent yearbook? Remember, you didn't buy one. No. Welcome back. Computer science teacher Jerry Stice has been working at Hebron for 13 years, but this year has been particularly complicated after his wife Leah was diagnosed with a difficult health diagnosis. Hanya Qureshi gives us the story. Computer science teacher Jared Stites comes into work every day but goes home to his two kids and wife Leah, who's enduring the journey of double hit lymphoma disease. I think I was in somewhat of denial because we kind of had an idea that it might be lymphoma for a few months before the actual diagnosis in October. We'd actually been sort of thinking it might be cancer since about February. Uh, but we had some tests done and they were inconclusive, so we figured that I was fine. So, um, but, you know, when I faced facts, that's what it was. It, you know, it doesn't really hit you all at once. It's one of those things that, you know, eventually it just takes your life over and you just have to roll with the punches. Jared said he is proud of his wife's resilience and optimistic point of view. You know, um, all these you know, the hardships and, and difficulties and, and challenges that we've been pre presented with. And she's very focused on 
you know, just pushing through and, 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 and being you know, optimistic. Both Jared and Leah said that the little things in life are cherished now more than ever. I'm appreciating the smaller moments of life a little bit more because, you know, these smaller moments, you don't know how many more you may have left. You can't help but think about that. So you cherish them because there's a finite. I mean, we always have like a finite number, but we don't usually think about that. And Being refocused, doing the things that I, I want to do with my life having the times with, with my kids that I want to have, and my husband, doing things as a family that, you know, we've maybe been putting off because of whatever reason. Leah said she's grateful for the support people, especially in the school, have given her on her journey. Every time I talk to someone about it, I get misty-eyed that just, you know, I feel like we're a part of a family you know, that we're part of the, even though I don't get to go hang out at Hebron or whatever, don't know the kids by name or whatever, that because he works there, he's cared for, and so I'm cared for too, and I think that's amazing. It's been really overwhelming. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Hanya Qureshi. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Hanya. You can donate to the Stice family using the link below. The girls basketball team wraps up their first season under a new head coach, Lisa Branch, tonight against Southlake. I got to take a closer look into the team's performance. After going through three coaches in the past two years, the girls basketball season is coming to an end with a 319 record going into tonight's season finale under a new head coach, Lisa Branch. Highs, uh, we won some close games, um, definitely lost some close games. Um, we're not playing for more victories by no means, but just seeing uh, how much they've improved, the team overall has improved from last year, is, is very high. Despite finishing last in district, Branch said she hopes the work put in at practice will eventually lead to more success in games. The lows are definitely the losses. Uh, we're not, I'm not accustomed to um, the losses that we've had this year, but I knew coming in it was going to be a challenge. Uh, we're in a tough district um, basketball-wise, and I knew it wasn't going to be easy. You know, a lot of fundamentals in practice, a lot of conditioning, a lot of shooting in practice, and uh, just hoping that those things will uh, transfer over to the games. Junior shooting guard Deja Melton and junior point guard Sierra Dixon both have goals they want to work on over the summer in order to have a better season and improve both skills and leadership. Um, encourage all players, including the freshmen that are coming in next year, and be a better leader on the court, i say. Personally, um, I just think working out during the summer, getting better in all aspects of the game, learning the game more, um, and just yeah, putting in time. Branch has been working on specific strategies in practice to get a win against Southlake. When we first played them over at their place, and they shot lights out. I mean, we shot well, but they shot lights out. They made ten threes by different girls. So yeah, the, so the strategy uh, tonight will be to get out on those shooters and make them put the ball on the floor you know, and then be ready to uh, block out and rebound. But we're definitely not going to give them as many wide open looks uh, tonight as we did the first time. Branch said her competitiveness is what's keeping her motivated to finish the season. Her goal is to teach the team to stay strong in order to finish the season on a positive note. I'm competitive. Okay, I'm competitive. Uh, the girls trying to teach them to compete. You're going to be competing for a job. You're going to be competing for team lead. What I'm trying to teach them, we're going to compete and we're going to fight to the very end. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Elena Barnes, now back to the studio. Tonight is senior night, and the team will play their last game of the season at 6. In other sports news, boys basketball will play against Southlake at 7.30 at home. Also tonight, the girls soccer team will play against Marcus at 7.30 at home, and the boys soccer team will play at Marcus at 7.30. That's it for today's broadcast. I'm Nico Cox. And I'm Elena Barnes. Have a great rest of your day. Have any story suggestions? Email us below. And make sure to follow us on Snapchat and Twitter.